Yeah, good afternoon. Um, at the very outset, I would like to thank the scientific committee for giving me this opportunity. We know that laboratory investigations in uveitis, they are not a panacea and they do not elbow out our- Can you slide some more? Hello? Slide some more. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they, they cannot, they don't elbow out our uh, clinical acumen. They are just tools to help us in trying to solve the jigsaw puzzle, which uh, uveitis is. I have no financial interest in my presentation. So why would we do laboratory tests? So it would be to identify presumed autoimmune disease, to identify specific uveitic entities, and to obtain diagnostic, prognostic, and therapeutic directions. But having said that, I don't think we should go for a fishing expedition. So there could be two approaches, a completely empirical approach, or a totally lab dependent approach. But I think the most practical approach is a tailored lab investigation on a case to case basis. So there are certain conditions of anterior uveitis where we may not need any investigations like a Fuchs uveitis, a traumatic uveitis, and probably the first attack of an acute non-granulomatous anterior uveitis. So before we order investigations, after a detailed history and a complete examination, we would want to come to a working clinical diagnosis in our office and try and shortlist etiological possibilities, fit this into the phenotypes available, and then order only relevant lab investigations first. For example, if we have this patient, an angry looking eye with a fibrin in the anterior chamber, we know a working clinical diagnosis is an acute unilateral non-granulomatous anterior uveitis. And similarly, this patient with mutton fat keratic precipitates, this would be an acute granulomatous anterior uveitis because we would tailor our investigations accordingly. So we know when we are dealing with anterior uveitis, uh, first of all, we would uh, try to figure out whether it's a uveitic entity or a non-uveitic entity. And if uveitic, whether anterior uveitis is granulomatous or non-granulomatous, and it is imperative to try and figure out whether it's infectious or non-infectious. Uveitis uh, masquerade, uh, uh, can masquerade, and especially if you have uveitis at the extremes of age, that should raise a red flag. So investigations in anterior uveitis could be ocular or non-ocular, invasive or non-invasive. So this young male with a unilateral, acute, non-granulomatous anterior uveitis, alternating between the two eyes with a hypopion, I think the only test which we would need to order first is an HLA-B27. On the other hand, another hypopion, because anterior uveitis could be an indicator of something ominous happening in the back part of the eye. So after detailed examination, if there is a posterior segment involvement, like in this patient, probably we would like to rule out bear shits and order for an HLA-B51. If we have a patient with these nodules, the copies, the Busaka's nodules, and the isolated uh, nodules like this, we know that we are dealing with a granulomatous anterior uveitis, and we would want to rule out the common granulomatous etiologies of tuberculosis and sarcoidosis. So a tuberculin skin test could be positive in 30 to 69% of healthy Indians, or it could be negative or weakly positive in 33% of TB patients. The other tests available is a quantiferon TB gold test, which is sensitive in identifying latent TB. The other uh, uh, imaging in tuberculosis could be a chest x-ray or an HRCT chest, which would show a tree in the bud appearance. And in case there's a doubt, subject the patient to an anterior chamber tap and send the aqua sample for a PCR for my mycobacterium tuberculosis. If we have a high index of suspicion for sarcoidosis, we would order for a serum ACE and also calcium and phosphorus. We know that serum ACE levels would be high in active sarcoidosis, but a normal value would not exclude sarcoidosis. And patients on systemic steroids may have a false negative value. If we combine a serum ACE with gallium scan, the specificity can go up as high as 100%. So the imaging in sarcoidosis could be chest X-ray or an HRCT, which would show bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy. And if you have uh, lymph nodes, you can uh, uh, do an FNAB or an EBUS TBNA and come to a tissue diagnosis of a non-caseating granuloma. Now, if we have a patient like this, we know with these kind of skin eruptions and anterior uveitis, and especially a sectoral iris atrophy, we are more or less sure that we are doing with or dealing with a viral uh, uveitis, and probably they may not require any investigations. 
Whereas this patient with a steamy cornea, diffuse pigmented keratic precipitates, this again is a viral uveitis with a raised intraocular pressure, and an Aquastap and an RT-PCR revealed an HSV1 for this patient. Now, if you have a hypopion like this with an intraocular lens, and a history of a recent cataract surgery. Obviously, we would not be uh, investigating this patient for any uveitic etiology, but we would rule, uh, like to rule out an acute postoperative endophthalmitis. Another pseudofacic patient was being treated with steroids for chronic postoperative uveitis, not responding. So this is where investigations would really help us. So this, an AC tap from this patient revealed a, a P acnes. So this was a low grade endophthalmitis. Now, syphilis can cause any kind of uveitis. It's a great mimicker. So we would like to do one uh, a non triponemal test like a VDRL or RPR and another triponemal test like a TPHA or FTA-ABS. Diagnostic dilemmas are not very uncommon in uveitis. And these are areas where lab investigations would help us in trying to get to the cause. This was a 32-year-old man with hypopion and was not responding to topical and systemic steroids, and an AC tap revealed a microfile area. Another eight-year-old girl with a persistent hypopion uveitis, not responding to topical and systemic steroids, and this turned out to be a retinoblastoma. A 55-year-old male with bilateral hypopion, his peripheral blood count showed a CML. So just to wrap up, to conclude that laboratory investigations not only help us in the diagnosis, but we may have to investigate these patients with their routine bloods, their liver and renal profile, because we might need to initiate this patient on medications which have potential systemic toxicity. So if we have a patient like this who has an acute non-granulomatous anterior uveitis, what tests would we order? Probably an ESR, an HLA-B27, and an ANA. On the other hand, a granulomatous anterior uveitis, we would want to uh, do ESR, a MANTU, a quantiferon TB gold test, serum ACE, and image them with either a chest X-ray or an HRCT. So a practical approach for investigations in anterior uveitis is neither a totally empirical approach nor a lab-dependent approach, but with a middle path with a tailored lab investigations on a case-to-case -case basis. Thank you.